and we officially start. Hello, everyone. Um, thank you for being here today. And as we are running our third uh, webinar, which is uh, about assessment and exploring forums. Um, I am Anna Kassa, I'm education advisor here in Moodle HQ. And today with me is uh, Mary Cooch. Hello, everyone. I'm education manager at Moodle HQ. And uh, over to you, Anna. Let's get started. Thank you. Uh, well, if you join us in uh, the previous uh, session, in the previous webinar about assessment, it, which was, was about exploring assignments, you will notice that uh, today's webinar follows the same concept. So it is an interactive uh, session where you have the chance to see things uh, both from uh, teachers and students' perspectives. And if you want to, you can also access the course where you will find the uh, preset examples and we are going to see those together. Um, and you can actually try them for yourself. The course link is here, uh, as you can see. Uh, the course is called Assessment Exploring Forums. And we are ready to move on. Now, you may already have heard about uh, Moodle uh, and how it can support different type of uh, assessment methods, different grading methods, and about the several uh, type of activities that has uh, and can be used for assessment. Let's see things a little bit in uh, detail. Uh, Moodle. There are uh, activities that can be auto-assessed from the system, uh, activities that can be assessed by a trainer, and also activities that can be used uh, with, uh, can be set up actually with uh, peer assessment. And there are two main grading methods that are supported. The simple direct grading, where we can assess uh, activities with uh, numerical points from 0, 10, 0 to 100, something like that, or custom scale like uh, missing, weak, fair, strong, or not give a grade if we don't want to. But uh, there is also the advanced grading method, and we can have their rubrics or marking guides. I'm not going to talk more about these two because we are going to see them in detail later. So we have many graded activities in Moodle. Some are human graded. It means that uh, either a teacher, either uh, peers need to uh, assess. And these are the assignment, the form, the glossary, the database, and the workshop. And we also have uh, system graded activities like uh, the quiz, lesson, the H5P, and the score. Our previous session was about assignment. This session is about forum. And as you can imagine, there are more uh, uh, assessing, assessment sessions to come. But as I said, today we are focusing on forums. So in short, uh, forums allow students and teachers to exchange ideas by posting comments in a thread. So forums are uh, mainly are the main online uh, tool for communication and collaboration within an, an online environment uh, as they support a synchronous discussion so a lot of people consider them just as a communication tool but since they can be graded they can be also become assessing tools so um Forums are very easy to be set up in uh, Moodle. It's a very easy activity and um, it's very, very powerful because uh, has many settings and the combination of those settings can help you set up uh, a forum for a formative or a summative assessment. And let's see things with a wider overview. So in a formative uh, setting, uh, we have activities where the goal is learning. And we set up the forum, that forum, to be always available. 
And if we use grading, it will be to motivate learners. In these cases, the subscription to the form will be automated or optional. The auto uh, setting, the auto subscription, means that uh, by default, learners will be subscribed and they will receive notifications to their emails. And the optional means that uh, they can decide if they will be or not uh, uh, subscribed. On the other hand, if we set up a form for summative assessment, the goal will be the assessment per se. So we might want to use uh, due and cutoff dates to make things more strict. We certainly uh, grade for evaluation and the subscription could be forced. Also in a formative uh, forum, we might want to uh, rate by, uh, grade by enabling ratings and perhaps we want to um, empower learners and give them the right to do a peer rating. We don't have to use a pass grade for that and usually the completion is set to view and a number of posts and in formative forms the grade in the grade book will probably set with a weight zero percent so as not to affect the course total. On the other hand, when we have a summative uh, forum, we might want to use ratings or a whole forum grading for teachers to grade. We might use a pass grade required and the completion will be again the grade. And in the grade book, the weight for this activity could be probably more than 20%. So uh, Moodle has six different forum types, and today we are going to see five of them, excluding the announcements forum, which is one way forum. It's not uh, communication and learners cannot participate there. And we're going to see uh, how to combine with uh, the two different grading options that they have, the post rating and the whole forum grading. So just before begin with that, let me share the first uh, poll with you. Okay. Can you see it? Good. Uh, please tell us just to uh, meet each other, know each other better. Please tell us a bit about your background, if you are primary school teacher, secondary or professor, what's your affiliation here? Um, and for how long you're using Moodle? And if you have ever used the forums for assessment? I can see that we have many people that have never used or rarely used forms for assessment. I'm wondering to see if we, <laughs> we will change your mind today. Okay, and let me end the poll. Okay, and let's see the results. Do you see the results? Good. So we have a lot of trainers today and uh, other uh, users. I'm wondering what could that be? Please give us an, uh, a clue in the chat. Uh, we have experienced uh, Moodle users for more than two years, great. And uh, yeah, just 20% you regularly use forms for assessment. So uh, please feel free to share as we move on in our session. 
feel free to share your example and your ideas about uh, uh, assessing with uh, forums. And um, returning back to the presentation and move on. Um, so we're going to see different types in combination with the different grading options here. And let's start with uh, the each person post one discussion. This is one forum type where uh, each learner can post exactly one discussion for others to see and reply to it. And uh, we have combined uh, today this type of forum with uh, post rating for teachers and we use a numerical scale. Specifically, we are going to see an example where we have set up due and cutoff dates. We have allowed three attachments, word count, subscription is set to auto, retracking is forced, and uh, post rating will be in a zero 10 uh, scale with a maximum aggregation. And all it needs to be completed is one just discussion. So let's see it. You may jump into the course if you want to see it live, uh, it's, uh, we talk about the each person post one discussion. This is the section and uh, the forum is called Renewable Energies. Now, I'm here as, uh, as a learner, as a learner one, actually. I can see uh, the due date and uh, the completion notification. And also I can see that I can now add a new discussion topic. And also see the warning that this forum allows only one person to start one discussion topic. So as soon as I start and create my uh, post, my first discussion, I won't have the right to, to do any more. So let's see this and how this can be graded as teachers. Um, come here, it's person post one discussion and I'm opening the renewable energies. And here, wow, we have a lot of uh, <laughs> participation. I wasn't expecting that to be honest. Okay. Um, I can just click one and I can see here the option to rate the examples. Um, let me move just back to see an actual submission from learner one. This is a very good learner. You will see in the, as we move forward. Uh, we have the word counting here. I can see how many words added. I see two options. And at the bottom, I can see that I can give the rate and that's it. It wasn't very good after all. So um, to actually understand the maximum rating and uh, to understand the concept of uh, all those settings, we have to see uh, the context. So in all of our examples, we first set the scene. The context here is that we we are transferred in uh, high school where the physics uh, teachers is uh, offering the course uh, online. And uh, he wants to, this teacher wants to implement a flip class method. So he wants to ask learners to make a research and then come here, add a new discussion topic and describe uh, the renewable uh, energy and the serve the research they have done. The point is that uh, teachers shall choose to have the aggregation set up to maximum because he mainly is interested to assess only one post, the very first post, where each learner describes uh, their uh, research. And we we need to have in mind always what's the context. Otherwise, the, the settings don't really make uh, sense. So we saw the uh, cutoff date, the due date on top 
But as said, we have a cutoff date set up as well. Um, the cutoff date, you don't really see it now, but when it expires, when it is reached, you learners won't be able to keep adding posts to this uh, forum. So another uh, warning will appear. And now I would like to ask you, do you like numerical scales for post ratings? What do you think? Please tell us in the chat. And Mary, would you please share your opinion? Yes, um, I do like numerical scales because I think they're, they're simple. You can see exactly where you are and what you've got, particularly if, as in your example here, it's uh, just the teacher doing the, the rating and they're more than likely to only rate one forum post, as in your flipped learning example there, with the each person posts one discussion post. I think some people struggle a little bit with understanding the different aggregates for rating, but I think in this case it works very well as a fairly straightforward one. We do have some comments in the uh, chat actually. In fact, uh, Vasitis agrees with me saying this would be the simplest to rate, I guess, because it limits the student to one post only. Well, it doesn't necessarily limit them, but it means we are focusing on that post they make once they've done their, their research in the, in the flipped learning environment. Um, just a, a general comment from Sam asking, what advantage does a forum assessment have over other Moodle resources? Are they easier to set up, more likely to engage students? I would say it's not that they necessarily have an advantage, it's just you can use them in different contexts. And personally, I feel that uh, some learners just like the idea of typing into a forum. It's less formal than an assignment. And so it, it will sometimes engage them a little bit more. And then one more thing is um, Alex says uh, they prefer scales one to five. And uh, Rob is asking, can you open a one topic forum? I think you mean a, each person posts one discussion topic forum for peer comments later. Uh, if, you're, if you mean getting the learners to rate each other as opposed to the teacher rating, I think we're going to be covering that um, yeah. shortly. Okay. Uh, Eduardo prefers to use a rubric. Well, we'll talk about that as well. And yeah, we've got some people discussing the uh, students rating and also single ratings like Moodle.org useful. And this is really great because the comments I'm seeing are discussing things that we're going to look at shortly. So I'm going to pass back to you, Anna, and let's continue. Great. Thank you, Mary. Thank you, everyone. And uh, let's move to our second example. The second example is with a single, simple discussion. This is the type of uh, forum. And in this type of forum, teachers uh, post a discussion for students to reply. No uh, option for them to add another discussion or to initiate a different topic. So we have combined uh, this type of forum with uh, post rating by teachers using a custom scale this time. Uh, please note that this time of uh, form, the single simple discussion cannot work with separated groups. Keep this in mind if you want to use it for groups of work. Now in the set, in the example that we'll see, the setup has uh, subscription disabled and retracking is forced. Uh, post rating is set to custom scale that we will see, and all it requires is one reply. As you can see, or can, you can imagine, this setup is way too simple. And you will realize why. Go please check and the example number two, a single simple discussion, where you will find the lessons learned from Aesop's fables. Now we are in uh, an elementary school with very young learners. And here we are in a literature course, uh, uh, which is offered in a blended learning mode. So 
there has been already a discussion about Aesop's fables in the class and teacher wants learners to share their lessons learned uh, as a homework. So young learners, all they have to do is just to click reply and post their answers. Now, um, as a teacher, let's see how we can grade this. Uh, lesson learned from Aesop. And you can see here, uh, already we have people answering, thank you. And uh, so easy. I have set up a very, very simple positive scale only with two levels, bravo and well done. And I can quickly uh, rate just by uh, actually making a comment, not a, an actual rate. This is a positive scale only. This is obviously a, uh, a formative assessment, if we call it <laughs> assessment. And my intention is just to give a positive feedback and uh, congratulate learners for their um, work. So that's it. A very easy, very quick setup. Perhaps you are wondering about custom scales. I'm not sure if you have used it, but I have to tell you, it's very, very, very easy to set them up. All you have to do is to click the gradebook and from the gradebook, the scales tab, and you will be here if you select the add a new scale. You give the name, you give the uh, scale levels and a description if you want to for others to use it. If you do have uh, teacher rights, then this scale will be shared within your course and you can use it in several activities. If you have admin rights, uh, then you can also uh, tick here the standard scale and make it uh, sidewise uh, used. So please tell us what you would prefer, a, a numerical or a custom scale for post rating. What's your opinion? What's your opinion, Mary, actually? I, I um, well, I like both. Obviously, I like everything in Moodle, but I think a custom scale is particularly useful because you can tailor the scale to what you are doing. So just as one example, in the Learn Moodle Basics facilitated MOOC that we run twice a year, uh, just to give people examples of Moodle activities, we have a database where people submit their favorite recipes, perhaps from their countries. And so we have a custom scale um, based on deliciousness um, because it's looking at the, the uh, recipes and it's not, uh, it's not graded, but it's just a way of, of giving your opinions. So I like the fact that with custom scales, you can um, focus on the context there. So for example, we've got, I'm reading backwards through the chat here, lots of comments here. We've got uh, Vasiti who says satisfactory, unsatisfactory. We've also got uh, Vanessa who says, and I like this one, sometimes we use approved, not approved. Of course, again, this depends on what it is. Quick point to Dev who says, where can I find a fix for the single simple discussion with groups problem? There isn't a fix. I don't think you can use a single simple discussion with groups. You'd have to have several of those forums and then you could restrict them using restrict access to groups, but you can't use one of them with groups if you understand what I mean. Um, and then uh, Claire's commenting how, how we also that Students have a choice of what to post, text, audio, video, and um, so on. Okay, and it, the, the general consensus seems to be people prefer custom scales. As Sam says, agreeing with me, you can make them very relevant to your students and use their language or style of feedback. Oh, okay. very clever. Yeah, and then Hugo does say, um, this also goes to the grade book. It does go to the grade book, but you don't have to include it as a grade if you're just using them for formative assessment. So I'll pass back to you, Anna. 
Thank you. Thank you so much for your contributions. And let's move on to our next uh, example, which is a standard forum for general use, probably the most common uh, forum type used ever. Uh, in this uh, forum type, teachers write an introduction and uh, which stands above the discussion and students can uh, see about and to add new discussions, reply and everybody makes posts, several posts and several discussion and can be really vivid uh, activity. Uh, we have combined this standard form for general use today with uh, learners uh, rating and we have uh, set up a custom scape and we're going to see in details things. We have also um, set up subscription to be optional and forced retragging. We have overridden learner permissions so as to allow learners a rate post because by default, the role of the student or learner doesn't uh, have the right to make a, a rate. So we will see this, how it can, you can do it. And uh, the post rating is gonna be with a custom scale average uh, aggregation this time. And the completion requires to view and make two posts. So let's see. You can check uh, example three, standard forum for general use. And uh, the forum is the facilitation success and horror stories. Mm -hmm. Now we are, uh, this activity actually is a nice breaker forum. It's a nice breaker forum in a train the trainer session. So we want to uh, unlock people. We want them to get involved, say their thoughts and uh, get uh, start meet each other, uh, comment with uh, within each other. And um, that's why we have enabled here P rating. As you see, I'm logged in here as learner one, and I can see uh, that I can add a new topic if I want to, and I can check uh, what learner two has already uh, done. And if I check his uh, discussion, I can see the rate option. And as teachers did before, I can actually uh, read, I can actually rate. Now, as a teacher, I'm coming here. I can see all the stories here. And if I click a post, I can also rate. And to be honest, why not? I mean, this is a nice breaker activity, I think. Uh, we can overdo a little bit with uh, grades uh, and have fun. And why not give, you know, a feeling of gamification, like, uh, uh, let's see who's going to get the most of the points and the uh, most of uh, the ratings and uh, select the best story to tell. That's a, a fun activity. It's that's, uh, very uh, easy. To set up we don't have to officially grade it it's obviously again a formative assessment uh, activity uh, but we can play a lot with it and just to uh, explain that p rating is a very simple process let me show you quickly how it's done as a teacher when you click the um, actions menu inside the form you select permissions don't get panic with uh, the table that you will see. Just go and filter uh, rate post. And uh, you're going to click uh, the plus under the roles with permission and select the, the role of learner or student, depending your system. So does forum P rating fit in your context, Mary? Yeah, well, absolutely. I, I think most of the uh, courses and so on that I'm involved in do have forum peer rating. It works really well with 
social constructionism upon which Moodle is based. I mean, uh, as an example on Moodle.org, people who uh, ask questions and then others reply, we have a single option, which is useful. It doesn't have to be when you do any kind of rating, you don't have to have more than one. You can have just one single option. Uh, you could have um, an emoji, you could paste in an emoji to have a like. And uh, I really like your star rating as well that you had as that example. And again, if we're not using it to be graded, then it's, it's fine, it's fine to do that. And what's really nice to know here is that David is saying, yes, I think I'll try this in my next course in January. That's what we want to hear, people getting ideas and then trying them out. Um, Dev is asking, can I set up forum moderation or an approval process before a post appears? Um, no, I, I think you're asking in general about, can someone post to a forum and you, the teacher, moderate it in advance? I don't think that's true. However, I suggest you take a look in our tracker, our Moodle tracker, tracker.moodle.org, because this is something that has been asked for quite often. Um, okay, Sam has asked, said he recently created a course of curated tutorial videos and wanted a way for students to rate them, couldn't find a solution, should have thought that a forum with ratings would do the trick, so we found your solution for you, Sam. That's great. Yep. Next time. To you, Anna. Thank you. Thank you, May and everyone. We're moving on to the next example, which is a Q&A forum. It's one of my favorites, I can say. Uh, and this, this is a different special type of forum because here teachers uh, post a question where students need to reply before being able to see other learners' replies. So, uh, we have combined uh, this Q&A forum with uh, teacher grading that will be done with whole forum grading and a grading rubric. Uh, a grading rubric is a set of uh, criteria with uh, defined levels and its uh, criteria. And it looks a bit like this, usually. And uh, in the Moodle, uh, rubrics have been firstly introduced in the uh, workshop activity, if you are aware of that. And a little bit later uh, appeared in the assignment. And actually, this is a screenshot from the assignment uh, rubric. And even later, they appeared in uh, forums. So, Today, we are going to see a Q&A forum set up with uh, auto subscription where retracking is forced, whole forum is creating, uh, enabled with a rubric, and the completion is to view and get two replies. Let's see now. Uh, example number four called Q&A forum and providing feedback is our form, is our example. You can see that as a learner, I don't have the option to add a discussion or add a new question. I can only clear and view the grades. And this is uh, this uh, button appears here because we have enabled the whole forum grading. Uh, you can see also that um, I get a warning that this is a question and answer form. And in order to be able to see my colleagues' uh, answers, I have first to put my, my original reply there. And I have also underlined um, a note from the guidelines the teacher provided. It says that 30 minutes after your reply, you will be allowed to see your peers' pause. And uh, this 30 minutes has to do with uh, the time that the system needs by default, uh, that the system allow learners actually to edit their uh, post. So 
when you have noticed when you make a post and send it uh, in uh, Moodle, you will get a notification that you have 30 minutes to edit that post. And this is exactly the note here. Now, let me first. Oh, sorry. Uh, if the 30 minutes haven't passed, or if I haven't uh, replied to the original question of my teacher, I won't be able to see what's inside the form. I will be getting this uh, subject hidden. I see that someone has made a post, but I cannot see what this post is about. So I first need to do my stuff. Now, as a teacher, I can always see the posts. from uh, everyone without any delays. But as you can see, I cannot grade from here. See, there is no rating. That's because we haven't enabled ratings. We have enabled the whole forum grading. So this works differently. To assess this forum, I have to go and click the grade users. Now, I want to... Uh, make a point here. It's uh, often a, an often a mistake from teachers learner to add the description of the forum and set up the activity and forget to initiate the discussion by adding a new question. So if you intend to use a Q&A forum, set up the activity and then do ask a question. Otherwise, learners won't have something to answer to. Now, let's go and see how we can grade users. I'm a user too, so I can see here my post. But uh, let's find, let's see actually what we have here. We have here all the forums. And on the right, we have the grading rubric. I can collapse and expand the rubric to have a better look here. And I can um, toggle full screen to have a better view. And also I can search for learners. So I can see here, learner one has done one post. This is not enough. I can mm, I have here my rubric, uh, detecting constructive feedback. He actually has nicely answered this, but uh, he gave uh, some good justification, but he hasn't done any other interaction with learners. So, I select and I rate every criterion and I may choose or not to send a notification to learner. And I can click here, the button to save the change and proceed to the next one, or I can simply click save. And grade is saved. So let me go back to the course, to the presentation actually, because this way you can rate everyone. And please let me know, would you use grading rubrics in a forum? Okay, um, yes, I certainly, well, we certainly use grading rubrics. I use them um, in assignments, but rubrics grading whole form grading is quite recent. In fact, it might be that some people don't even yet have the Moodle version that allows you to do whole form grading. So I'll be very interested to see what people say in terms of 
using rubrics in a forum for more summative assessment. Um, we have a few comments actually related to rubrics and forums. Vasiti is asking, can you show if when group mode is enabled, can we also mark with a rubric in whole forum grading? You can. What you need to ensure is that your course is set to groups, but also the individual forum where you're doing your whole forum grading is set to groups because then your teacher, when they go to the forum before they start the grading, they'll see a drop down and they need to choose their group so that then when they go to grade using rubrics, they will be given the members of their particular group. And um, Sam is talking again in, about rubrics in general, finding that many trainers don't really know how to create rubrics. They're subject matter experts and forget what it was like to be inexperienced and articulate the various levels of competence. It just made me think, actually, that that could be a good course or a good uh, little video on creating rubrics and good practice in that. Something yeah, to note for the future there. Um, Eduardo is saying it can be overwhelming, really. It's good that we have Moodle documentation. Uh, <laughs> Alex is saying rubrics aren't particularly popular among their teachers. And uh, what else do we have? David's agreeing, not even used rubrics in assignments, let alone forums, because they're quite difficult. Um, now, Dev is asking, wishing students to be able to add new questions. Is it possible in a Q&A form? It's possible. You have to tweak the permissions, though. I can send you the documentation link later if you want to post in the course forum. However, if you want them to add new questions, it might be worth using a different type of forum. Um, yes. Yeah. OK, lots of people saying lots of things. So let's go on and move on to the next discussion point. OK. Thank you, everyone. Let's see our next example. Is uh, again the standard forum, but in a blog-like format. It's a different type. Uh, it is exactly like the standard forum where everybody adds discussions and can reply to everyone. Uh, the only difference is that the first post of each discussion is displayed. So it's displayed and actually looks like a blog. We have combined this uh, type of forum with uh, grading, whole forum grading, uh, with a marking guide this time. And of course, this grading will be done by teachers. Uh, the marking guide is something like this. It's a list of criteria with description for learners uh, and uh, teachers and uh, with mark set up up to a maximum score. So in our example, we have enable uh, attachments, we have optional subscription, we have read tracking disabled and you will realize why in a while. And also we have set up groups mode to be separate and uh, whole form grading is enabled with a marking guide and the completion is set to view and one post. Now, before getting to this activity, I would like to tell you a little bit uh, about this uh, setup. This forum is special, not so much because of the marking guide used, but because it has been set up as an individual forum. Now, the most collaborative tool of Moodle is an individual. Well, yes, it can be set up like this if you want, if you need it, depending on your uh, context. Let's see the context and you will realize uh, what's happening. Now, uh, as I said, this forum has been set up with separate group modes. And because uh, the courses in the Moodle Academy are self-paced, uh, you cannot actually take this activity by yourself because you don't belong in a forum. And um, so bear with me. We are in a high school and this is uh, the last activity in a goal setting course. This is a reflective uh, forum 
where a teacher wants to see if the new knowledge received by learners has been well received. It's not a question of right and wrong uh, answers here. They just want to check that learners feel okay with this course and with the uh, activity and with all the new things that I have learned. So it's mostly a checkup with learners. That's why the inputs of these uh, reflections must be private, must be not shared with other learners. They are private between teacher and learner. So we have set up uh, groups and in each group, we have allocated just one learner. I'm here as a learner too, and I belong to the group B. Actually, this is my group. <clears throat> and uh, well, I don't, I didn't really like that course. So <laughs> yeah, I reject that course. Completely waste of time. And now, uh, facilitator or trainer needs to assess those inputs. <coughs> we have a disabled subscription because actually learner inputs are what matters. We don't want to encourage uh, teachers' participation and discussion. We don't want the post from teachers here. Only a very discreet uh, comment a uh, very discreet approach. So let's see what teacher sees and how a uh, marking guide can benefit here. So taking the reflecting on goal settings course as a teacher. And uh, I can see the post from all participants. Someone asked about uh, separating groups and if I have set up the groups in my course and I have uh, turned on the group mode in my activity, I can uh, see users separated by group. So here we have one user per group. Things are very easy, but if you had more, the case is the same. If I come and grade here users, I get basically the same layout as in the rubric. I can see the post and on the right, I have uh, the marking guide. This is the marking guide title. And I can see here uh, the criteria before the course, during the course and after the course. And I can also collapse things to make uh, easier for me to review and take one thing at a time. So uh, before the course, if I click this uh, information button, I will be able to see the description created for learners. Did you expect the course to be as it is? And a note for markers. That the important thing here is to understand students' feelings where they stressed, worried about the course. Assessing this activity is not a fast track. Given each student the time to his, the time that they deserve, and offer them a quality non-judgmental feedback. So what I'm doing here, what we have done here is to use the marking guide and provide guidelines to learners and to facilitate on how to assess this. I can close this now and expand the section. I can give that uh, uh, up to three a score and add some comment if I want. And I can directly type my comment, thank you. Or I can click here the plus icon to see the frequently used comments, which are already preset from the person who set up the activity. And yep, I can select this one, I like it. And I can then move on to the second. Let me close this so you can see better. 
so during the course you did very well and again choosing and this is a huge safer uh, for grading okay this guy has done really really well so yep and i can say or i can save and move on to the next one now this is the value of uh, the marking guide and marking guide is uh, a great idea to be used when you have when you create a course but you have multiple uh, facilitators running running it so um, have you ever used forums as individual activities mary have you I have experienced forums as individual activities, yes, because when I did a master's course where they use Moodle, we had a similar thing to what I think Kim is saying here, what was a, a virtual office. In, order, in other words, there was one forum for each of the students on the course where the teacher or the tutor could communicate. I would give a, a, a caveat or a warning that if you're a teacher and you're setting up something like this with individual forums for each learner, make sure when you post, you post to um, you ensure that you post to all groups and not just all participants because then they won't be able to reply. We've had quite a few comments here. Um, and uh, Zunara is asking if it's time effective having to set a group status for each learner. Actually, you can automatically create groups in a um, course. So you can just set the groups to be one person per group and Moodle will do it for you. And Vasiti is interested to see how a blog-like forum can be used for individuals. But uh, Eduardo is, is making a very good point. And again, this is when we're talking about grading with forums, where is the benefit or what are the differences between a forum that's graded or using a rubric or a marking guide and an assignment? He said, there's no need to create many one person group forums for this when you could use assignments for reflection. It's a good point. Um, you might have some thoughts, Anna. Personally, I like using forums because it can be like a journal which can be ongoing which is, uh, and also more informal, more relaxed, even though it is very, very important. Whereas assignments are a bit more formal, really. And it's less good to have a kind of a flow. Vanessa, exactly. I wish there was a qualitative way of providing feedback for each criterion. Actually with a rubric, you can add a column that's just feedback that you just type some, some thoughts and opinions. That's not part of the actual points that are graded. Uh, lots of things that if you have any, um, and Sam is actually saying, yeah, for me, a forum feels more personal as opposed to using an assignment for reflections. Exactly. I was about to say this, if this case was a case in, within a university or in a vocational training, it would be certainly an assignment to me. But this was for high school uh, learners and I think that it was more relaxed. So it depends on the context. It depends on uh, the course you're teaching. It depends on the goal you have for your course and the soft skills you want to enhance and your audience above all. Yeah. So uh, is there something else you would like to read from uh, the chat? Yeah, well, Eduardo's thanking us for our points. Alex is thinking that uh, teachers new to Moodle might find this rather strange, a course with forums and assignments only, each with a large variety of settings and grading methods. Well, yes, indeed. That's why we take one uh, activity at a time and we are not presenting all of them together. But you can start slowly if you don't feel very confident with that and you can have a lot of help from the online course because you can get all uh, the settings uh, you know you have that uh, back of the scenes uh, view <laughs> and recreate those activities exactly as they are in our courses and you can play with them it's pretty easy to get used to it 
and let's move on. Uh, this is our last example. And for our last example, we have <laughs> uh, something special. I would say, um, I would like to ask you just before uh, describing this example, uh, are you aware of uh, the workshop activity in Moodle? Please give us a note in the chat. Have you ever heard about Moodle workshop activity? Have you ever used it? We've got uh, Sam saying avoid it where possible. And then other people, yes, 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 used it once. Oh, great. Uh, okay, okay. Great. I'm uh, really happy that you are aware of that. Um, it's a workshop, it's an advanced activity that allows learners to self and peer review and um, actually make a submission, self and peer review that submission. And then teachers can um, review the assessment that has been done by learners, but also the actual submission as well. So here uh, in our last form example, we have um, mimic this uh, setup. So we have uh, each person post one discussion form type, and we have enabled P rating in a simple 0, 10 point scale, and also uh, allowed whole form grading for teachers with a grading rubric. Let's take a look. Uh, the settings here are many. Well, <laughs> we have set up cutoff date, we have set up a word count, subscription is auto and retracking is optional. We have enabled post threshold uh, allowing two posts within a week. Uh, tell you the tip, I use this because after this week we have the cutoff date. So I want to make things very, very strict. You see why. And uh, we have override learner's permissions and set the rating to 0, 10 points uh, with average uh, aggregation. The whole grading is also enabled with a rubric and have a pass score to six. The completion is two replies and whole grading. Uh, whole grading break is required, that's what I mean. So, I'm here as learner one. Uh, I get the red warning saying that I have limited period to do my work here. I have to uh, make two posts within a week. After that, there is a cutoff date. Uh, and uh, this forum allows each person to start one discussion topic. So let me explain why. Now we are in a university context. We have uh, learners in the course of learning theory, uh, introduction to learning theories, and learners have already select, perhaps with a choice, uh, the learning theory that they are going to work upon. They have to use this forum and they have to summarize the learning theory that they have chosen uh, in 800 words. And then they have to make a comment and evaluate another, uh, another learner's post. So things here are serious. This is a summative assessment. Um, let's see if I click, if I were, indeed learner one, I would definitely click the view grades to see how am I going to uh, be assessed for my work. And uh, as you can see, when I get in and check my, uh, check my post, I see that someone has already graded me, but I can also rate back. I don't have to, and this is something that you need to remember. When post ratings are enabled, you don't have to rate everything. Rate what is really meaningful. The rest can be just meaningless comments. So let me first take you to what teacher sees in the learning theories forum.
I get all the information here and let me check. I have here a very good post, looks good, but don't tell anyone. It's just a copy paste from this uh, Creative Commons open resource. But let's assume that it's a good rate and people start rating here. Me as a teacher, I could also rate, but I don't want involved in this because I want learners to do their work alone. And then I can come here and as before, grade users. Let me check, let me find learner one. And I can see that this guy has done indeed uh, a good uh, initial post, is competent. And I can see that has also um, a reply made. Uh, perhaps I need to check the context of this reply to get a better idea. Or I can click view discussion to see the whole discussion at the pop-up window and close it. And okay, I cannot really tell that this guy, Learner One, did a very good um, reply, I would say actually, intermediate. And um, I'm saving and move to another. I want to show you though what Learner Two did. Because this guy did a really um, poor uh, submission, initial submission. So that was not, no, not yet competent. Uh, but he did a very interesting comment here in his uh, colleague's uh, submission. So I would say that this is proficient actually. And I can say, now, Learner 2 has actually failed because he didn't do a good initial post. And when he will check his status, uh, he will see that he failed to receive a grade. If you remember, we had set up this form activity with uh, whole forum grading to require a pass grade up to six. He get two, so he actually failed. And if he clicks now the grades, the view grades, he will see where his problems are. So one thing that I want to quickly show you is uh, a quick look into the gradebook. As a teacher, when you enable in a form both peer rating, both ratings and a uh, whole form grade, you actually get two inputs, two grading items into the gradebook. So you can uh, allocate different weights to each of them. For example, in this uh, summative forum, I want to give 20% uh, weight for P rating, and I will give 80% for the whole forum grading. Now, what do you think? Is it too complicated or uh, less complicated than a uh, workshop? Well, it's less complicated than workshop. Um, it really depends on your existing level of Moodle skills. I love the idea of uh, using each person post one discussion with ratings for the learners and with grading for the teacher. In fact, I'm quickly looking through the chat now because we need to finish very shortly, but this would work very well for something which um, Catherine asked her a while back about um, she uses Google Slides with um, comments, student, uh, many teachers use Google Slides for student work and then adding peer and teacher comments, which form would best match this? I think this could work very well, your, your suggestion there. 
Um, and uh, if you have any other questions, by the way, and we, we're finishing the webinar, do post them in the course. Do go back and make the most of that course and share it with your uh, colleagues uh, and so that they can watch the uh, recording as well. Yes, and um, although this session is coming to an end, uh, the discussion forum will be there for, for a long time. <laughs> so <laughs> you may always uh, come back to the course. And uh, let me just wrap up and uh, launch the last uh, poll. Uh, It is. Must coming. Yes, you can see it now. Okay. So uh, there are just two questions. Uh, you can make multiple selection. Which uh, of the settings we have seen today were completely new to you? You've never used them. You have never heard them before. And the second question is, uh, which of the settings we have seen today you will attend with your students? Please let us know what's gonna be your first try. Well, I just submitted mine. So and it's not a secret, it's peer rating and whole form rating. Getting some nice comments from people as well as we wrap up the webinar. Stephanie saying, wonderful to see the versatility of forums as an assessment. Thanks for that. Okay, I think we're, okay, let's wait a little bit more to allow uh, everyone to participate in the poll. I know the options were uh, quite a lot. And uh, let me, and the poll. And share the results, just a second. Okay. So, uh, most of the people didn't know about uh, advanced grading rubric and marking guide. And the combination that is possible between peer rating and whole forum grading. Uh, we have a lot of people that are coming to, will actually uh, try the peer rating and the whole forum grading with a rubric and the combination of peer rating and uh, whole forum grading together. Uh, that's great. Thank you. Thank you so much for being here today, sharing your knowledge and your experience with us. Uh, our um, webinar assessment exploring forums has come to an end and uh, I'm going to stop the recording now. Thanks everyone. Uh, just before uh, you uh, leave, I would like to uh, share with you just an idea how to get involved uh, if you enjoyed your, this webinar uh, and our courses in Moodle Academy. You can actually get involved with uh, us and help us grow by contributing actually to uh, the development of the Academy. You may suggest topic ideas by joining the uh, get involved course in the academy, you can share ideas and you can um, volunteer to contribute to webinars and get a presenter's badge or contribute to online courses that we are going to offer and you will receive a course builder badge. And uh, 
uh, if you don't feel very confident yet to share your knowledge, you can still help spread the word and tell your friends and colleagues about the Moodle Academy and AVC. Come uh, take the courses, complete the courses, and earn your badges. You can share uh, the badges publicly and tell others about uh, Moodle Academy. And if you have uh, a year of experience, of teaching experience with Moodle, why not consider to come and get the Moodle Educator Certification? Uh, inside the Academy, you will find the MEC readiness quiz and take it and you might be ready already for the MEC. Thank you so much for being here. Looking forward to see you in our next webinar.